Okay, so what we're going to have a look at here is um, sliding filament theory. We're going to start out with the resting sarcomy or the muscle at rest. You can see we've got the myosin head, we've got ADP and the phosphate iron attached to it. And in the middle here we've got actin, which is the red balls, and we've got troponin and tropomyosin. Now troponin and tropomyosin are actually wrapped around the actin and at rest the the troponin active sites can't connect to the myosin heads so when there's no calcium in the cell the orientation of these little active sites means that the myosin can't join up with them and if we uh, progress on when calcium comes into the cell what actually happens is that these sites are shifted slightly so that the myosin can actually connect to them the myosin heads and that's the action of calcium so when that action potential comes down crosses a neuromuscular junction causes calcium to be released into the sarcoplasmic reticulum then that calcium floods the muscle cell and the troponin becomes available to the myosin heads what's happening now is that those myosin heads are connecting to those active sites and the next stage is what they call the power stroke. Now during the power stroke the ADP and the phosphate iron that was sitting on the myosin head are, are um, ejected off and release energy at that time and the energy is what is used to actually make that power stroke. Now obviously this looks tiny um, in terms of it's just one little unit doing this but you imagine millions of these things happening at once pulling the actin along um, and so obviously that's how you uh, that's how you create a contraction so now what happens is ATP comes back in binds up to the myosin head and then it's hydrolyzed which um, which puts the puts it back to an ADP and P state um, and then we're back at the start here now as long as there's calcium round within that cell those sites would be active so the cycle would continue so the two two qualifiers are for a contraction to happen I must have calcium within that cell and I must have ATP that's come back in and allowed this myosin head to release and to be hydrolyzed and ready to go again so one of the things that obviously happens is um, rigor mortis which is when someone passes away and, and soon afterwards their muscles get quite stiff and the reason for that is that there's no supply of ATP so the muscle is bound up and because there's no ATP to come in it can't unbind so of course it looks like it, you know the person's got contracted muscles and they're actually just locked um, and the reason they're locked is because these myosin heads are bound to the actins and there's no ATP to actually release that again so um, yeah, if you're ever wondering why uh, bodies look terribly unpleasant for the first two to ten hours after they've passed away, well that'll be why.